keys and the bells on an open slate. All I gotta do is shut my eyes and I can see those twinkling lights. And every street line with decorations in my hometown tonight. Yes, and strangers stop to share a smile. Bright houses filled with joy and laughter as they bless the child. It's my favorite time. It makes my heart shine. And I can't deny that Christmas is my favorite time of year. Abby? I see you're in your happy place. I hope you don't mind I let myself in again. You know you're welcome any time. You always work so hard, especially around the holidays. Half the time, I don't know if I'm coming or going, but this place, it makes me so relaxed, even if it is just for a few minutes. That's how I feel about the greenhouse. I just shut out the world. Speaking of which, raspberries. I picked them from the greenhouse this morning. Thank you. Are you sure there's nothing else I can help you with? Hey, do you want to cook? The inn is without a chef for the next few days. Oh, I thought you got somebody to replace Matilda while she's away. So I did, but he just canceled on me last minute. I wish you could help, but I'm prepping for the festival next week, and uh, my sisters are coming over. We're making Christmas chocolates. You better get me the mint ones again this year. No, I think I'll be able to manage the guests without Matilda, but maybe I'll start by serving some fresh raspberry scones. You are not baking the scones, are you? Yes, how hard can it be? I'll add a little extra sugar for some extra Christmas sparkle. <laughs> These are so good. We look forward to hosting you. Thank you. We'll see you Friday. We're just in. The National Cooking Network crew is staying with us for the By the Bay Christmas Food Festival. The Brooks Point Inn is going to be fully booked. Merry Christmas to us! Fully booked? I haven't said those words in years. What? You have a date? Very funny, Brad. Aren't you supposed to be fixing a toilet somewhere? Happy to report that the toilet in room 7 is no longer running. However, we do need to replace the ceiling fan. Okay, let's go room to room and make a list of repairs. I want everything in full working order for the festival. Uh, we're ahead of you. It's been on our repair list for a while. Well, look at you. Okay, why is this so long? Chipped paint in the stairwell? That's charming. That's fine. Uh, there's a fine line between charming and rundown. Well, the building's 100 years old. It's allowed to show its age a little bit. Well, the Brooks Point Inn is not about swank. We are about history, community, and that little personal touch. The NCN crew will love their stay here. Everybody always does. But that, however, needs fixing. I'm on it. I'm on it. Thank you. I'll talk to Grant about hiring some extra hands. But in the meantime, I think we're all going to need to step up and do a few extra chores, OK? For sure. Thanks, guys. Abby, wait, uh, where are you going? I'm gonna make some scones for our continental breakfast. I got these fresh raspberries from Cheryl's. I'm gonna put some white chocolate on top, a little sugar. Mm, they're gonna be so yummy and Christmassy. Why don't I call the diner? I can get some vouchers for the guests. No, oh, that's not necessary. Plus, it's not in the budget. It's my job to make sure everything runs smoothly here, so we don't have a chef, our guests are hungry, I'm gonna fix it. I'll call the fire department, give them a fair warning. Thanks, Brad. There's no one here. The streets are empty. Yeah, that's exactly why you're there. It's not New York. Brooks Point Harbor is the perfect place to lay low. Your reservation's under Gosling. Jason, just relax, get some sleep, try to enjoy it while you can. We're gonna have you back at Corwin Brothers before you know it. How many times have I gotta say it? I'm done with it. Or, oh, it's done with me. Either way, my career is over. This is all gonna blow over. People are gonna forget about some stupid mistake the minute the next celebrity scandal breaks. That mistake was on national TV. Live, in prime time. They're not just gonna forget. Yeah. And you shouldn't have been in that competition in the first place, especially after what happened to your brother. I'm going to smooth things over with the board at Corwin Brothers. We're going to salvage the book deal. And it's not like they canceled your contract at TNCN, suspended it, sure, but there's always hope. Don't waste your time. I don't want to go anywhere near a kitchen. 
Welcome to the Brooks Point Inn. How can I help you? You didn't want an elevator. All right then, Mr. Gosling. Uh, no relation. Let's get you checked in. So are you in town for the festival? What festival? Is there always smoke billowing out of your kitchen? <sighs> That's just five alarm Dennings, doing what she does best. Okay, well what she does best is gonna set us all up in flames. Mr. Thank you for calling Brooks Point Inn. This is Laura speaking. Oh, stupid hunk of junk. Okay, that hunk of junk is actually doing its job. Are you trying to burn the place down? Um, no, actually, I'm not. I mean, everything's under control. I'm just doing a little bit of baking here. Whoops. There we go. And, uh... Scones, all under control. I see why they call you Five Alarm Dennings. Hi, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I don't normally um, greet guests this way. I'm Abby. I run Brooks Point Inn. I didn't realize smoke inhalation was part of the complimentary service. The next show starts at five. <clears throat> um, and, and you are? Jay. I knew if I followed the smoke, I'd find my granddaughter. Grand, are you all right? Is everything okay? I was gonna ask you the same thing. Oh. Oh, hello, dear. I'm Alice. I see you've already met my granddaughter. Yeah. I'm hoping that our home will suffice for your temporary home away from home. Well, I won't be staying long. Oh, I hope you reconsider. The smoke will clear, dear. It always does. If you'd like to follow me, I can get you settled in, into one of our non-smoking rooms. How are you? Okay. Come. You good? Yeah. So, what's up? Weren't you supposed to be out with the Cocoon Club this morning? I didn't feel up to it. No? Is everything okay? I'm fine. Eloise's sister had Parkinson's. I'm sure she'd be a wonderful support if you let her. I'm not ready to tell her yet. I don't want her treating me any differently. You have to stop worrying about me. Now, I've got presents to wrap, and you've got a very handsome gentleman paying attention to you. Gentlemen, he barged in here and barked orders at me. Well. It was evident that you needed a little help. And he, above all, should know his way around the kitchen. Okay, and why on earth is that? That was Jason Corwin, of the Corwin brothers. <laughs> a handsome pair they were. Oh, you know, uh, they have that fancy restaurant in New York. Well, that explains the bloated ego. More like a broken heart. It was a tragedy about his brother. Oh, was he the chef whose brother died in that plane crash? Right. Hmm. Ah, well, Gran, I don't know if it's such a good idea that I take over for Matilda as chef. I think that you can do anything you set your mind to. But perhaps this is not your battle. Your mother was a terrible cook. I mean, really awful. And don't even get me started about your dad. Oh, I know they would be so proud of you. You work so hard to make everyone around you happy. But you deserve to be happy, too. What? I am happy, Gran. I've got everything I need right in front of me, right here. Right back at you. What are your thoughts on hiring an extra set of hands, just one person, to help Brad out? Because I know he's run off his feet. He's so busy, he doesn't have time to fix everything. 
Fran, is everything okay? Oh, yes. Well? Gran, what is it? Do, do you need an ambulance? No, it's not that. <sighs> the inn's out of money. I've used my personal savings to balance the books for over a year. And I've neglected paying the property taxes for a few years. I wanted to tell you, but I really thought I had everything under control. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm sure it's not that bad. Oh, it's worse. But this is my home. And I can't even imagine living anywhere else. Oh, Abby, I'm so sorry. I've let us all down. And it's okay. I know. I know this is your home. I... Let me take a look at the books. I'm sure I can shuffle some numbers around. $43,000 is an awful lot of shuffling. Leave it with me. I'll think of something. I promise. Okay? Okay, it's okay. to board. Wanted you to know the meeting went great. They loved our ideas. Man, there's the craziest sunset at the airport. Makes me excited for tomorrow. I'll call you when we land. Oh, great. Nice to see you too. Sorry, I was just hoping to do some thinking on my love seat for a bit. Your love seat? Didn't see your name on it. No, not my name, but my parents. They used to hang out here quite a bit. This was kind of their spot. Anyway, I don't want to interrupt your cell phone time, so... Plenty of room for two. I'm sorry about your parents. Oh, it happened a long time ago. I wear their wedding ring so I feel closer to them. It's funny the things you hold on to. Oh, I always feel so calm here. I bet your lungs do. Five alarm. I guess I'll never live that one down. Listen, about earlier, I'm, I'm sorry for the way things were handled. I know you were just trying to help. I shouldn't have been so rude. I was just on edge. It was a long trip. Thanks. So where did you travel from? New York. OK. And what brings you here? Free will. Just somebody else's. Well, lucky you, you're about to fall in love. You don't even know it. Brooks Point Harbor is a really special place. We're a really tight-knit community, and everybody looks out for everyone here. I don't really get the appeal of small towns. I love big cities. They're alive and busy. Noisy? Well, silence can be just as loud. I suppose. Oh, by the way, I actually wanted to mention to you, next week there I'm is a... really not interested in tourist attractions. Okay. Before you leave, though, you have to do yourself a favor. Try our diner's BLT. It's so, so good. It's to die for. Diner and dine. I can see how they go together. Oh, come on. You live in New York. You're telling me you don't like diners? New York is some of the finest restaurants in the world. Why would I eat at a diner? because they're not just a fad. Diners have withstood the test of time for a reason. They're steadfast and sturdy. Predictable, uninventive. <laughs> wow. Does it make you feel good being such a snob? Snob? <laughs> I just have a difference of opinion. I've never eaten at a diner. Never will. You have never? OK, you have to go to a diner. You have to go to ours and try the BLT. It's the best. No, I don't. And. How do you know it's the best BLT? I mean, how many diner BLTs have you tried? OK, easy, Mr. Corwin. Corwin. Gosling didn't last long. I guess my days of being undercover are over. You should tilt your nose down once in a while. Otherwise, you'll miss what's going on around you, or where you're at. 
Okay, that's not fair. Whatever you've read about me, you have no clue. I'm not assuming anything. You've made quite an impression here on your own already. I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to offend you. Well, you did. Brooks Point Harbor means a lot to the people of this town. You don't get to come here and hide out from whatever terrible things you've done and then judge anything you're not willing to experience yourself. Anyway, I have somewhere I have to be. Natural jitters today. The camera adds 10 pounds, even to a mayor. Too bad they didn't come off after the picture. <laughs> Heard you run into a bit of trouble at the inn. Matilda's replacement bailing on you? I can't be good for business. It's all under control, Mayor Joan. Thanks. This town's lucky I was able to snag such a prestigious national festival. It's wonderful that. All of the proceeds are going to fund the local after-school programs and the library. A portion of the proceeds, yes. This festival's really going to put Brooks Point Harbor on the map. Tourism's going to skyrocket. Mm, you're telling me. We're hosting the entire TNCN crew at the end. Well, you be sure and tell them if they want an interview with the mayor, they can have one anytime. Order's up, Abby. Hey, Joan, have you seen this? Christmas Chef Showdown? Grand prize of $50,000? Nothing to sniff at, huh? They want a mystery competitor, a local amateur cook to compete against their big name chefs. Amateur? As in no talent required? It is a televised event. Um, right to Abby. I can do this. <laughs> Five alarm dennings <laughs> in a cooking contest. <laughs> what, scorched sardines again? <laughs> that fish was flambéed. I don't think so. But if you did participate, having one of our oldest businesses would be great in my advertising. Yes, it would be amazing advertising for the end, plus $50,000. You have to win to get that. Thank you. You know what? I'll take two strawberry milkshakes to go, please. Do you have to keep playing with that thing? I don't have to, but if I don't fix it, this whole place will burn down. I'll try to be faster. Thank you. Strawberry milkshakes. Uh-oh, what's going on? Oh, you know, it's Christmas. You two have been doing amazing work lately. And? And I'm hoping you're willing to do a little extra hard work this coming week. So we're not hiring more help? What does extra mean? Just a couple of hours a day. I'm planning on entering the cooking competition in the festival. <laughs> what? More charred cheesecake? No more burnt skulls. <laughs> Very funny. So take a look at this. They are looking for a local contestant. If I'm selected, there will be two other competitors, which means I have actually really good odds at winning this thing. You know the other two competitors are actual chefs, right? Professionals. I know that, but they specify that they want local talent, which means they probably just want some charm and fun, which I will bring. How exactly are you going to learn to cook in a week? Online tutorials, Matilda's cookbooks, I have a kitchen at my disposal. Okay, I, I know I'm not the best chef in the world, I get a little distracted, but if I have something to focus on, I'll be able to move mountains. Okay, you know I'm all about self-improvement and you becoming less of a fire hazard, but why on earth do you want to do this? We need this $50,000. The inn's in a little bit of trouble. I, I was speaking with my grandma, who's been trying to balance the books, but it's bad. It's really bad, but if I win this prize money, this will at least bring us out of the red. The inn actually close? Not if I win this competition. 
Guess I could help Laura out with the guest services. Seems easy enough. I can help Brad with repairs. Have you ever held a hammer in your life? A hammer? What's a hammer? What's a girl to do? I know, I know this is a really big ask, but I can't do this without you. Okay, first step. Name. Abby Dennings. Easy. That's a lot of fine print. Are you a professional chef? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and click the no box on that one. <sighs> Are any of your employees or family members employed by the National Cooking Network? Nope. No, none of this applies to me. I'm as amateur as they get. What's next? Application not processed until full payment of entrance fee received. $500? What? Who has $500 lying around? We could have a bake sale, sell 500 burnt scones. No, no, the application deadline is tonight at midnight. I don't have time to burn that many scones. Abby, no. Well, you better get to cooking. Teach me how to cook. I'm not a chef anymore. Are, were, whatever. You still know how to cook. And apparently I'm also a snob. I know I'm being a little pushy right now, and I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you earlier. You actually? A little bit. Look, I'm not asking you to be my friend. I know I really irritate you. But what I am asking for is a teacher. I'm really hoping to enter a cooking competition in the By the Bay Christmas Food Festival next week. So food I'm... Festival? Gary. Oh, come on. You're already bored out of your mind. You've been here for less than a day. You gotta find something to do. It's not gonna be you cooking. It's going to be me. And it's not like I need to cook for the president. I just need to learn how to not set things on fire and not poison anybody. Yeah, sorry, it's a steep learning curve. Gary. Yeah, it's your favorite client here. Just wondering why his overpaid lawyer dropped him off in the one place that's hosting a Christmas food festival. Call me back. So that's it? Look, it's within your best interest not to be associated with me right now. Is it true? Did you cheat on that cooking competition? It's not a tough question. No one's actually ever asked me that before. My brother's memory was on the line, and I barely even remember making the decision. Do you regret it? Every day. So you made a mistake. People make mistakes all the time. People are allowed to make mistakes. Celebrities are not. Scandals like mine kill careers. I've completely undone everything that David worked so hard for. Wasn't it the Corwin brothers? David was the charismatic one. I mean, he was the peacemaker. Everybody loved him. He was the teacher, not me. I'm so sorry you lost him. And I know me saying that doesn't make things any easier. Thank you. You know, I've never watched you on TV or been to your restaurant, but I've lost loved ones. You just want to shut down and hide, but that doesn't make things any easier. You can't bring your brother back, but you can do everything in your power to continue his legacy. I've been ousted by my own company. Like, I'm completely toxic within the industry. Nobody wants me. I want you. And I'm sure you want another chance to redeem yourself. So you want to hire me? Not exactly hire. Um, I'm not totally flush for cash at the moment, but what I can offer you is undying gratitude and a little chance at some redemption. 
If I agree to this, you got to know it's going to be long hours. Yes, yes, I'll do anything. It'll be demanding and stressful, and you're probably going to hate me even more by the end of this. You mean I'll get an even closer look at the arrogant, egotistical Jason Corwin? He is also a class A jerk with antisocial tendencies. But as you already know this going in. Yes. This is going to be a lot of hard work, OK? No cutting corners, OK? We need to follow the rules absolutely. Is that understood? Yes, chef. And we also need to find another kitchen, away from the inn. You are far too distracted. If I'm going to teach you, I need your undivided attention. I know just the place. Cheryl's behind the cafe across the street. OK, we start first thing in the morning, 7 AM sharp. Do not be late. I will not be late. You're not even dressed for work. Go and change into something less flirty. I'm wearing a blouse. I have to look half decent to run the inn. It's not suitable for a kitchen. Go and change into something else. And tie your hair up. Hurry! Or you're really going to be late by the time you get back. Chef, so do I pass the inspection now? Excellent. OK, first things first, what have you got to prep for the competition? There are three different challenges, the appetizer, the main course with a side dish, and a dessert. OK, are they surprising you with any secret ingredients? No, but the food will revolve around a central theme, but they're not telling us that until we're on stage. Got it. OK, well, let's start with how to prep a plate, mixing different ingredients, flavors, colors, yeah? Yep. Number one is going to be knife skills. This is a chef's knife. Ooh, I like this one. Okay, put that down. <laughs> safety. Always safety. Got it. Hold the knife handle in the palm of your hands. Ease it up a little bit. And you want to keep your thumb pressed against the blade. You want to try and keep the knife on the chopping board. Smooth motions. OK? OK. Chef, do you ever think I'll be able to chop air like you do? No. Slow and easy. No rushing. You want the curved side down. This hand, you're going to want back here on the celery, away from the blade. And then just slow. Easy movements. Smaller, more uniform pieces. Right, right, so it looks nice. No, so it cooks evenly. Chef, does celery bleed? No, celery does not bleed. Number two, no shortcuts. Okay, these distractions, they can get you really hurt. But cuts do happen. So number three, get used to blood. I'm going to get the first aid kit. Hey, Chef, I think we might have another problem. Why now? It doesn't look deep. No, it's not that deep. Do I need stitches? The antibiotic ointment should help it heal pretty quickly. Just keep it clean and dry. Take care of that finger. You're gonna need it in the future. You're the best. Thank you, Cheryl. If you're not gonna listen to me, there is no point in me teaching you. I am going to listen, I promise. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, lesson is done for today. What? We were just getting started. Your head is not in the game, and I need to reevaluate my plan. Study this tonight. The pitches will help you with your technique. Do you have one with dummies in the title? Dummies. Really? 
I wouldn't have agreed to help you if I thought that. Oh, now you got me feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. Or maybe I'm still feeling lightheaded. There was a test in the morning. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Finger crossed that I don't amputate something tomorrow. That's not funny. Rule number four, no laughing in the kitchen. Okay. Preparing food for people is not a joke. It's an honor. Hey, why did you become a chef anyway? Be more occupied with yourself, Abby. It takes years of work to be any good, under the best of circumstances. If you want a chance at winning this competition, you need to find your purpose. Where's your focus at? Why do you need to win? Is <laughs> that win needs an asterisk. <laughs> Ladies, enough with the table talk, please. Oh, Alice is my oldest friend. We don't table talk, we read each other's minds. Well, that's still cheating. <laughs> Jason. I was just gonna get some fresh air when I had the snap of cards at the table. You have good hearing. Well, they hear professionals. People who do anything to win. Yes, fueled by tea and cookies. You have me at tea. Really? You're a tea connoisseur like the rest of us? I peg you as an Earl Grey kind of guy. Caffeine anything. I respect that. You were right. I need to focus on what's important. This? This right here is why I need to win this competition. The inn isn't just my home. It's a cornerstone in our community, and winning that prize money is going to keep it that way. Remember that for tomorrow's lesson. Jason, join us for a round. You should take my place. I have to make more tea. <clears throat> Can she make tea, Alice? Is that safe? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Jason would love to play. Have you played much euchre? Not much. help Brad with a few projects before heading home? She's actually pretty decent with a hammer. <laughs> How was card night? It was really fun. Oscar lost, as per usual, and Jason Corwin graced us with his presence. That actually doesn't surprise me. I was watching a video. He wasn't always a curmudgeon. <laughs> uh, I feel weird watching this. It doesn't even seem like the same guy. So sad. Wow. Okay, well, you guys can head home. We've done more than enough work today. Thank you. You got a boss. You want to live? Yeah, it's the bus.
grandkids are not going to believe I played cards with Jason Corwin. You lost it, cards to Jason Corwin. <laughs> Would you be a dear and sign your cookbook for my granddaughter? Alice mentioned you were staying here. Perhaps now is not the best time. Thank you, dear. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you all. Thank you very much for the game. It's okay to let yourself grieve. It's better to feel the emotion than to try to sweep it away. Once you've felt the loss, you can begin to heal. Thank you, Alice. I just wish I knew how. Lean on your friends. You have more support than you know. Is he better than me? Good. Very good. Hey, it was really nice that you played cards with the Cocoon Club last night. Shh. I don't want people knowing I might be a nice guy. That's to say I'm a card shark who was looking for a win. Sure thing, Mr. Card Shark. Smaller slices, remember, uniform slices. Right, right. So why did you sneak away so early last night? OK, the kitchen needs discipline and restraint, not gossip. It's not gossip. I just I saw you having fun last night. It was nice to see you let your hair down a little bit. OK, just focus on the work. I'm trying to focus. Would you lighten up? I feel like I'm walking on eggshells here. Sorry, but this isn't the place to get personal. I'm just saying we don't have to spend the day chopping and brooding silence, you know? You can have some conversation with somebody who's trying to be your friend. You said you wanted a teacher, not a friend. Whoa. You played cards with my grandma last night. I'm sorry, we're friends now. Jason, you're helping me. Maybe I can help but you a Abby, little bit. Abby, enough! <laughs> okay, now we are literally both walking on eggshells. Okay, come on, that's so funny. You're being all serious when you drop a carton. Jason, why are you so hard on yourself? Let's just clean it up and move on. What are you doing? You are wound way too tight. You need to let loose a little bit. Stop it. Not until you drop one, on purpose. I mean, that is not gonna happen. You can't just shut down all the time. It's okay to laugh a little bit when life gets messy. I'm not gonna laugh, I'm ticked off. That's a lot of anger over some broken eggs. You are the most... It's OK to be angry for a while. Grief is a process, but you can't just... Save it, right? I know all about grief. Why do you think I'm here when everything that ever meant anything to me is in New York? Because you haven't decided to fight for what you have left. How can I fight for it when signing a cookbook, just seeing a photo of my brother sends me into a tailspin? That makes sense. It brings back memories for you, Jason. Yesterday, you asked me why I became a chef. It was David's dream. We did everything together. Same school, same job. I didn't want to do anything else because I knew whatever we did together, we'd be great at. I didn't just lose David. I lost half of myself. Well, if that's true, then you still have half of yourself left. We can't choose what happens in our lives, but we can choose what happens moving forward. Maybe it's time that you find a new path. I don't know who I am without him. You're Jason Corwin, and that's enough. You don't need to figure out everything today, but you can start by being yourself, an imperfect human being like the rest of us. So stew on that. OK, how did that feel? Better than anger. <laughs> yes. Does anyone ever say no to you? 
A few people have tried. They don't really get too far. All right, what's next? I suppose scrambled eggs. Oh, sounds excellent. That's a terrible pun. But I appreciate the egg foot. <laughs> Dinner. What are you doing in Brooks Point Harbor? Jason? Hey, you're the last person I thought I'd see here. Oh, a little higher on the left. Okay. What? I work for TNCN now. They're the festival sponsor. Roger sent me down to do setup and to ensure the town was acceptable for a stay. You know how demanding he is. Well, that's generous. I call it difficult or belligerent. Or ego without the talent to back it up. <laughs> well, off the record, he's even worse after his promotion. He got another promotion? Well, after the competition ratings went through the roof, TNCN hired him as their full-time in-house executive producer. Ego or not, I don't know how he does it. He's so busy with the Corwin brothers, too. Yeah, or Roger. Right, well, I got a lot of Roger's details to take care of. It was nice seeing you. How's my favorite client? Did you set me up, putting me in the same town as Roger? Jason, look, I knew about the festival, but I didn't know that he was running it. Although, this could be a good opportunity for you. Do you hear what you just said? He's no longer my rival. He's just moved straight on into enemy. I'm getting the first flight out of here. I'm not even sure what I would do if I bumped into him. Jason, you're going to run into him at some point in your career. You might as well deal with it now. Listen. The board of directors called. They are warming to the idea of you returning to the company. They're not happy with Roger's decision to move into frozen produce. Well, of course they're not. He doesn't know the first thing about how to run a culinary company. All he cares about is the bottom line. I'm not going to sell to some big chain that has no understanding of the concept of personal service. Besides, I'm not going to have to sell at all. Abby's going to win the money and pay off our debts. Abby can barely boil water. She only has a chance of getting chosen because she's a pretty local with a historical cause. Plus, she'll be against top chefs. I believe in her. You need to think about what's best for the future. If I get you a substantial offer, you could live comfortably the rest of your life. You're impossible. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> Abby. Mary Joan. I hope to get that water boiling technique on lockdown. I'm sure you will. Fran, I'm sorry you had to listen to that nonsense. I'm afraid she has a point. The bank is not going to wait forever before they foreclose. No, 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 Gran, Gran, please don't sell just yet. The, the ads at the festival are going to bring in more guests. Plus, my practicing has been going really well. Look at these cookies. They're not burnt, not even one of them. I believe you can win, but the fact is, if you don't, I'll have no other choice but to sell. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just practicing outside of school hours, Chef. Cutting onions. Burning onions more likely. The pan is way too hot. Might as well just throw it out and start again. Right, I forgot. Medium low heat for caramelization, right? Right. <sighs> hey, do you want a glass? Uh, I think I have something other than Chardonnay. Is that code for me being a wine snob? <laughs> no actually code for, I'm going to finish this bottle myself, so let me get you another. I may not know the difference between my kale and my collards, but I take my wine very seriously. Cheers. Got it. This 
so you have all the big names out tonight. It's good that you're doing the research. Abby, you're not cutting onions anymore. What's up? I told you finances were tight. They're not. They're dire. If I don't win this competition, my grandma's gonna have to sell the inn to one of those big chain motels in town. It's a lot of pressure to put in yourself. And that's just the half of it. You know, if she has to sell, I'll lose my job. We won't have this place anymore. My grandma's in the early stages of Parkinson's. And this is her last connection to my parents and my grandpa too. So it's just really important for her mental health that she stay in the inn. Why do you, you keep doing that? Where's your necklace? I use the rings to raise the entrance fee for the competition. So if I lose, the rings are gone too. Oh, I'm so sorry. You don't need to, you don't need to hear any of this. I'm just blubbering all over you. How about that? Dinner and a show. <laughs> Listen to you, working on that sense of humor. Let's give dinner another try. It would be great for distraction management. The key is to breathe. Quiet the mind. The competition is going to be chaotic and noisy, so you might as well get used to it. Should I get some wooden spoons and pots and pans for your enjoyment? With your hands off, I swear. Not bad. Mm, I'm sorry, it definitely could have used a lot more cheese. No apologies, no excuses. Whatever you put in front of someone is your masterpiece. Be proud of it. Don't give them a reason to criticize it. If they come up with their own, then fine. Okay, chef, honest opinion. What did you think of this masterpiece? The pasta could have used two more minutes, but other than that, it was pretty good. You mean it? Yeah, I do. I have a question for you about your competition. How did you get disqualified? Was it store-bought chicken broth? Is it a little more complex than that? My popovers didn't rise two minutes before the buzzer went off, and my sous chef offered his rosemary potatoes. Marcus later denied that he offered them to me and that he played any part in it. I was publicly shamed, and he got his own TV show. That doesn't seem right. I shouldn't have been in the competition anyway. I was not in a good place after my brother died, but Roger persuaded me to do it to honor David's memory. Were you and Roger close? Not ever. He likes to get under my skin. At the funeral, he said, it's a shame, and I quote, the more talented brother died. Well, I never had the pleasure of knowing David, but I think Jason Corwin's pretty great. Well, I should get going. 7 a.m. sharp tomorrow. Crash course on main courses. I feel like I've been doing a lot more crash than course lately. A lot less crash every day. I'm here to make sure of that. You need to make sure you save the inn. Keep tomorrow night open for a field trip. I think you and I could use some fresh air after all this smoke inhalation that's been going on. Good. We can talk about any surprises TNCN might throw at you during the competition. Actually, I was hoping to maybe have a few hours where we just don't talk about the competition. Field trip it is. Great. I'll pick you up at 8. Snow's building tall, let 
let's let it fall. I'm gonna regret Got this. My excuse. Stay here with you. The power just went out. It's beautiful. We're fine without it. Another it's my favorite place to see the town at night. Stay so calm and quiet. I've not seen anything like it in the city. There's so many stars. It's a hidden gem. This is magical. Thank you. Back to the end now. <laughs> hey, how are you? Do I see cookbook admirers? More like fanatics. I haven't seen this book in years. I learned to cut omelets from this book. We came by the shop today because we wanted a little inspiration for my cooking lesson. Help yourself to anything. You know your way around. Okay, I was also wondering if we could... Take some vegetables off my hands from the greenhouse? Please. Let me see what's ready and I'll bring it right in. She's the best. Okay, let me show you this over here. Wow, this is beautiful. I would have killed to have produce like this as a chef. I tried to do my own little rooftop garden after my brother died, but all I grew was weeds. That can happen when you lose your light. I lost mine when my mom died. She so stopped cooking? For a while. Now and then I have friends over for dinner. Your heart needs to be in the garden to make it flourish. You know, Abby has a beautiful light. Carrots. I just want carrots. Looks like the TNCN crew has arrived. Yeah. I'm gonna let Laura check them in so I can keep practicing. Wanna join? I've actually got some errands to run. Okay. But I'll catch you later? Yeah, sure. I need you out there. The room's ready to go, but I'm not sure they're checking in. What? Whatever the guests want, they get. We have to make sure everybody's happy. Matilda's RV broke down and she won't be back for a few days. Okay, we'll need to organize the meal vouchers for everybody until she gets back. Okay. Hmm. Meal vouchers? For that diner? Is this some kind of joke? Merry Christmas! My name's Abby Dennings. I'm the manager here at Brooks Point Inn. You are the mystery cook on our Christmas chef showdown. What? Did I, did I get selected? You haven't heard? No. Somebody from my team was supposed to contact Joan, and then Joan was supposed to contact you, and somewhere I must have fallen through the cracks, but congratulations, you have been selected. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Roger Evans, VP of Communications and Executive Producer at the National Cooking Network. Well, it's so lovely to meet you, Mr. Evans. We're so excited to have you here. Mm, I'm sure you are now. I only agreed to these accommodations because I was told they include breakfast and dinner here at the inn. Now, I'm having a very important client to wine and dine with tonight. And if that kitchen is not running, I'll be more than happy to find somewhere else to stay. And I'm taking the entire crew with me. You know what? That won't be necessary. Our chef has just had a slight delay outside of town, but she'll And be... Abby has hired an even better chef. Laura? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Problem solved.
Mr. Evans, wait. I've been waiting for too long, Miss Dunnings. Now, are you able to provide dinner or not? Yes. Yes, we'll have dinner ready for you at 7 o'clock tonight. Well then, it looks as if I'm checking in after all. Wonderful. Is there anyone to pick up my luggage? Oh, absolutely. Or why did you say that? I panicked. We couldn't let him leave. All right, stay here and check in the rest of our guests, and I have to go prep dinner service. Do you want me to call Jason? Nope. No, I got this. Welcome to the Brooks Point Inn. Jason? Hey, Laura. It's gotten a lot quieter up here. Yeah, ever since the TNC and crew got settled in, things really settled down. Where's Abby? I'll give you one guess. Oh. Abby, what's going on? Sorry, but I tried. Abby, no buts. It's like everything I told you over the last week has just disappeared into thin air. Jason, that's not true. I'm just trying Jason, Jason, put me down. I have to cook dinner. Take your breath. What's going on? Matilda isn't back. But Roger Evans is here, and he's here with his entire crew, and he's threatening to leave if I don't have dinner ready for them tonight. Take a breath. The festival's a few days away, and I thought I had this whole cooking thing in the bag, but then I got here and I panicked. And... There's no way I'm gonna win that festival, and my grandma's gonna have to sell this in, and it's... I needed to breathe. Why didn't you just call me? Because you don't work here. And honestly, I didn't know if you'd come. After everything we've been through this week, you think I'd abandon you now? Abby, you're the only reason I'm still here. Jason, I wanted your help, but I... Don't think I'm ready for the kitchen? I don't think that, but I don't know if you think that. Ever since Cheryl's produce, my brain has not been able to stop creating new dishes. David and I always wanted to cook farm to table. I'm finally excited about being back in the kitchen again. Really? Do you have any new ideas? Lots. Especially since I met you. Take this. Every chef needs one. It's amazing. No. <laughs> Jason, I don't know what to say. Well, that is a first. <laughs> How long do you cook Chicken Supreme? Until it's done? There she is. <laughs> Go get changed and grab some disposable gloves. I'm going to teach you the rules of poultry. It's going to get messy. You held your own in there. You should be proud of yourself. Wow, this is a little weird. I kind of miss you yelling at me. <laughs> I never yelled at you. OK, but you wanted to, though. Wanting to is very different. <laughs> You've done wonders for my patience. You were right. I didn't think I was ready to step back into dinner service. 
but I actually had a lot of fun. It wasn't just David's dream. I wanted this. If it wasn't for you, I never would have found my way back to the kitchen. I can fill in for Matilda until she comes back. That way we can carry on doing this and you can keep on training. Really? No. No, I'm so grateful for everything you've done, but I can't afford to hire a Michelin star chef. There. Now you've paid me. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Well, it was worth every penny. <clears throat> Pardon me. Did I mean to interrupt? Hello, Roger. Jason? <laughs> you working here? What a surprise. No, Jason doesn't work here. Everyone's wondering where you've been. And here you are. Well, thank you both for a delightful dinner. Maybe I'll have Chanel drop off your signed contract at the front desk. Although I'm not entirely certain I'll be proceeding with the competition. What? No, I need this. Sivarn still has pneumonia, which leaves me with Clara Tasker and you. Now, I need a professional second chef before my audience. I need... Wow. Your local caller. And I know you hate every single project I do, but you are back in the kitchen, aren't you? Oh, Jason would love to step in. Done. Tomorrow, two o'clock. Okay, I know I shouldn't have jumped in, but this will give you a chance to clear your name. Abby, I don't want to compete against you. You need to win this prize money. Jason, you are at your happiest when you are cooking in a kitchen. You belong on that stage. Do this for you. Turn right. Okay. Go in. You're almost there? Nearly. Okay, and sit to your left. No peeking. A lot. And open your eyes. So, what can I get for you guys today? Two BLTs on rye, please, Gail. Sure. What? The Jason Corwin in a diner? Well, I hear the BLTs are to die for. I also hear Gail got some of your famous Christmas pudding. Easy, you're not getting that recipe. It's a family secret. It's Gary, it's not important. It seems important. I need to focus. Breathe. So we've got two BLTs on rye and two strawberry shakes on the house. And the famous pudding. The one dish you always make perfectly. Come on, Gail. You know you're not getting that recipe either. It's a family secret. Well, I will not stop trying. <laughs> uh, mm. New York. You miss it. Less now. I don't have the same drive that I used to. Oh, I don't believe that. You come alive when you're in the kitchen. For right now, I want to be here with you and trying this world-renowned BLT. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, you need to get to the hospital. Alice had a spell. Graham, what happened? I tripped on the area rug in my room, and I knocked my head on the table by the door. Were you feeling dizzy again? No, Abby, I, I just tripped. It's nothing to fuss about. We don't know that. We don't know. Abby. Grant, I need you to be okay. 
And I am, okay, Abby, really. Dr. Murray insisted I get rid of that loose area rug. And he made me promise to reduce my stress. But there is one thing I would like to get off my chest. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's. My symptoms aren't severe at the moment, but I haven't felt comfortable leaving the inn for a few weeks. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you treating me any differently. And Oscar, I'm still going to beat you with euchre. Badly. I know you will, Alice. I know you will. <laughs> we'll face whatever's coming together, as we always have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. see him in the kitchen. He's so confident. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's just, he's so passionate. Honestly, it's hard to focus on the chicken. <laughs> Abby, you like him. No, he's just, he'll have to go back to his life eventually. A lawful for my lady? Oh. Oh, let me get you a napkin for the tahini sauce. <laughs> okay, you and Brad then? I know. Our resident handyman is actually quite the gentleman. <laughs> well, as unofficial matchmaker, I need a bite of this falafel. Mm -hmm. well, last week you wanted me to stay. Now you want me to come home. What's changed? Roger's frozen line is hurting the brand. The board wants you back on as chairman. Well, what if I don't want it? You said you were cooking again. Yeah, and enjoying it for the first time in forever. I mean, yesterday I made a beef wellington and enjoyed every moment of it. Why do I want to go back to everything that made me so miserable? Roger is hawking discounted frozen foods made with the cheapest ingredients he can find from who knows what sources under your name. That can't sit right with you, Jason. Well, of course it doesn't. Well, then you need to head up your own company. Email me their proposal. I bumped into Roger. Long story short, I'm in the TNCN competition. What? Anderson pulled out. They needed a replacement. I'm here. It was last minute. I mean, it seems legit. Just be careful. I know. Abby Dennings. Table for one? Well, look who it is. What are you doing by yourself? The two lovebirds are over there by the pie table. Laura and Brad? <laughs> nice. How about a date to the crepe table with a scandal-ridden, moody ex-chef? I'm OK with scandal-ridden and moody, but what kind of crepes are we talking about? Ladies' choice. Whipped cream. That's your choice. Mm -hmm. OK, forget it. Date's off. What? Why? You can have fresh berries, cured ham, jams, and you choose whipped cream. You have the palate of a six-year-old. Six-year-olds know what's up. Shall we? is behind you. A very charming Michelin star chef is also rooting for you. OK. I'm ready when you are. Ready. Graham! Halloween! <laughs> are you sure you're up for this? You've had such a long day already. OK. Either you want me to get out more, or you don't. But don't go changing your mind on me. I get confused enough these days as it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> We love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Go get them. Thank you. Oh. Couldn't go get her seats. Okay, okay. Hi. I'm I'm Abby Dennings. I'm the mystery contestant. I'm just I'm a huge fan of yours. 
It's nice to meet you. So, how long have you been cooking for? Oh, you know, a couple weeks. <laughs> Good luck. I don't know if I can do this. Yes, you can. Win or lose, you're gonna do it spectacularly. There is no shame in that. Remember, when you're up there, it is just you and the ingredients. Nothing else matters. Focus. No shortcuts. You're gonna be great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. All right, everyone, cameras roll in just a moment. I need enthusiasm, I need applause, I need smiles, and action. Welcome to our Christmas Chef Showdown. I would like to introduce you to our MC for this competition, Marcus Aiken. Welcome to the TNCN Christmas Chef Showdown. We're two of the best chefs in the country. Marcus, my sous chef. You mean the one who forgot to have your back? Yeah, but if it wasn't for him, I'd still be in New York. Lonely and miserable. So if anything, I owe him. You'll be making an appetizer, a main dish with a side, and a dessert. Each dish will receive a maximum of 10 points. After the third course, the chef with the highest point tally will win. $50,000! Now please give a warm welcome to our contestants. Clara Tasker, head chef at the zoo in Chicago. Jason Corwin of Corwin Brothers in Manhattan. Welcome, Jason. And now, it's time to meet our mystery cook. Brooks Point Harbor's very own, Abby Denning! <laughs> Miss Denning manages the Brooks Point Inn right here in town. Chef, you must be dying to know this competition's theme. Whether it's around a big table or leftovers the next day, this food is delicious and irresistible, comforting, hearty, delicious. Your theme is Family Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Contestants, you have 60 minutes to create a festive appetizer that your family would love. Good luck to each of you. Your 60 minutes starts now. I am focused. I feel ill. Shortcuts, no. Distraction management, yes. Welcome back. All the appetizers were delicious. In first place with nine points, Corwin's chestnut soup with fried parsley. In second place with a score of seven, Tasker's butternut squash spinach tart, which leaves Abby's bacon-covered water chestnuts with crunchy cranberry slaw in last place with six points. Chef Corwin, I had the pleasure of tasting your soup. What did you call it? Cream of career comeback? <laughs> Congratulations. Are you ready for round two? For your next family Christmas challenge, a main dish inside, please spend your time wisely. Contestants, begin.
Jeff Corwin, troll by the clock. Just a few more seconds and his spectacular pork tenderloin would have made it to the judges, but it did not. The judges award you four points. Denning, your roasted Brussels sprouts was refreshing. Eight points. Jeff Dasker, your perfectly seasoned turkey gave you the edge. You win this round with nine points. <laughs> Chef Corey, I'm sorry. Your family Christmas is done. Thank you for having me in your kitchen, Chef Aiken. An executive chef versus an aspiring cook. Who will win if anyone gets? Cuts, let's take the break. Thank you very much. Gingerbread cookies, they're so good. Wave to my grandkids. <laughs> I'm filming all this. Stuff. Abby, great work out there. Thanks. Jason was instrumental in helping me prepare for the competition. I bet. He's a master of flavor and texture. I miss working with him. You should speak with him. I know. Marcus, would you excuse us? It's chatting with you. You're doing wonderfully in this competition, actually far beyond my expectations. Thank you. There is one little detail that's kind of bothering me, though. When you signed the contract, you stated that you never hired anyone from Tianxian, and yet that's not entirely true, right? Yes, it is. You paid Jason to cook for your guests. I saw it with my own eyes. Are you talking about that pocket change thing? Because that was a total joke. And besides, Jason doesn't work for TNCN anymore. You canceled his show. On air or not, he's still on the contract. Which, for you, my dear, constitutes a violation of contract. Roger, I have to compete in this competition. Oh, no, no. I'm not kicking him out of the competition. However, I need Clara to win. You see, we need new on air talent, and she's a star. But if she doesn't win, then I'll give her a show now, can I? So let me get this straight. You want me to lose on purpose? Or what, you'll expose me on national TV due to some clerical error? Do you really think that Jason can withstand another scandal? Because that is exactly what's going to happen if his involvement comes to light. Jason had nothing to do with this. I was the one who signed that contract. It doesn't matter. I will make the public believe what I want them to believe, and perceptions of wrongdoing would only ensure that Jason never sets foot in a professional kitchen again. And you stay CEO of Corwin Brothers. This is disgusting. This is business, Abby. I am looking forward to seeing your dessert, Miss Dykes. Welcome back. It's time for our final challenge, the sweetest part of any meal, dessert. Contestants, 60 minutes, starting now. Yuletide's coming, so you made a list. You think of this year to get your Christmas wish. Look it from the window at the falling snow. I just went on a Christmas card, hoping that he shows. It makes my heart. Smells like Christmas on this stage. And the winner of the Christmas Chef Showdown, brought to you by the National Cooking Network, with a perfect score for dessert, Abby Dennings! Home cook beats two top chefs. Unbelievable. Tell us about your winning dessert. I can't believe this. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, 
To be honest, I lucked out with the Christmas theme, and, and I made my grandma's Christmas mini puddings. <laughs> my family has enjoyed this recipe for, for generations. I, ah, um, I, I never fail at making this recipe because I always take the time to make it exactly the way my grandma does because we, we always make it together. I love you, Gran. Any plans for the $50,000? Yes, I plan to save our home, the historic Brooks Point Inn. Okay, cut. Abby, backstage. Right. Sure, yeah. I'm here, Marcus, thanks. Did you really think I wasn't serious? That I wouldn't destroy him? I'm sending that press release. Oh, Roger. You know how older people are really bad with technology? What? Well, that's a myth. My friend Eloise just bought a new SD card. She likes to take a lot of videos. And she just sent me this. I know of you bogus. threatening me. You know it's bogus. But do you think that Chase is going to withstand another scandal? Because that is exactly what's going to happen if this moment comes to light. It doesn't matter. Mm. Um, Chips. Thank you, thank you so Crisps. Um, uh, to be honest, Wish I had pudding. Mm. Roger really is a piece of work. I'm sorry he did that to you. Marcus. Hey, Jason. It was good to see you back in the kitchen. It was good to see you, too. Jason, I'm sorry. I never had the guts to tell you the truth. Your popovers didn't rise because I replaced the all-purpose flour with pastry flour. You what? I sabotaged you, then I suggested you use what I cooked. I appreciate you telling me that. You are a good man and a great chef, Jason. I've never met anyone with more integrity than you. Everyone knew your head wasn't in the game. That only made it easier for Roger. It was Roger's idea. He can read people. He saw I was ambitious, and he promised me my own show if I did what he wanted. It was me that forgot the rules. I appreciate you telling me, but I have to take responsibility for my own play. I'm so sorry, Jason. I have no right to expect your forgiveness. Thank you. I thought I would make it like the first time we met. <laughs> yeah, except there was a lot more smoke in here. Hi, I am Jason Corwin, your new head chef. Really? You're moving here? <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know. We have very high standards here at Corwin Brothers. Well, I promise to work towards one more star, boss. Best Christmas ever. You get your parents' rings back? I did. Just in time for Christmas. I know we still have one more day, but I ran into Santa and he told me to give you this. <laughs> so does this mean Santa likes to cook? Of course. How else would he get Mrs. Claus to say yes? This book has inspired many great cooks. Many great cooks is right. Thank you. So, we don't normally exchange gifts until Christmas morning, but Gran wanted me to give you these. <laughs> you cut. <laughs> yeah. I've been practicing with Oscar. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Christmas Eve. 